hello and welcome to the next video on producing robust programs. Today we're going to look at types of errors. So unfortunately, we all make errors when we code. Even myself, who's clearly one of the greatest programmers in the world, if I'm writing a block of code more than, say, 10 to 12 lines, I'll almost certainly have at least one minor error I need to fix. So we need to be able to identify two main types of error. We've got syntax errors and logic errors. And hopefully by the end of this video, you'll know the difference between them and be able to spot both of them in code. Let's start with syntax errors. So what is syntax? Well, syntax just means the rules of a language. This doesn't have to be programming. It could be any kind of natural language. So for example, in English, we do have many rules about how to form correct sentences. So here's my good friend, Ralph. And Ralph's just said, me fail English, that's impossible. So clearly we can spot that what he's saying is grammatically incorrect. And we could probably give him the right form of that pretty quickly. So a syntax error is when the rules of a programming language are broken. Programming languages require very precise use of instructions. In the example before with Ralph Wiggum, we still understand him even though he's breaking the syntax of the English language. However, when we are creating computer code, if we break the rules of the language, the program won't run, it won't execute, there'll be trouble straight away. So unless the correct rules, the correct syntax is used, the program will generate an error message. And we're probably sick and tired of seeing them when we try and run our programs. So here are some examples in Python. So again, very basic syntax errors here. So you can see here we've got a crash here because we are missing one of the parentheses. Over here, because we're writing in Python, we need to indent this line of code, but we forgot. So it comes up with a syntax error. Syntax errors can also be slightly more complicated. For example, if we look over here, we've got a fairly complicated error here, or at least it looks like. Type error can't convert int object to string implicitly. And this is a problem with line four. So what's the problem with line four here? Print the answer is plus answer. Well, that looks fine. Let's look at the line before that. Answer equals num a plus num b. Okay, that's pretty standard math. But wait, these are both integers. So I'm putting them together. So that means answer must be an integer. And what I'm trying to do now is join a string and an integer together. Python doesn't know how to do that. It can't concatenate a string and an integer. So for this to work, I would have to convert answer to a string before this line will execute. And that way they're both strings. It can concatenate them both together into the same output and there's no problem. But again, I'm not using the right data types for my variables and that's causing a problem. So it's a syntax error. So syntax errors occur when programming language or the rules of a programming language have not been used properly. Some examples of syntax errors that you're probably familiar with include variables not declared before use. So for example, I say counter uh, plus equals one. That only works if somewhere in my program I've given an initial value to counter. I can't say counter equals counter plus one unless I've set it to an initial value. Missing out a bracket or a quotation mark. I do that all the time. Incompatible variable types. Again, we saw an example of that on the previous slide using assignment status incorrectly. So for example, we might say three plus four equals answer rather than answer equals three plus four. And I know when I'm marking mock exams, I see even experienced coders making that sort of mistake at GCSE level. They just get things mixed around the other way around because in our brain that makes logical sense. But of course, computer, it's always the other way around. We can also have problems with our variable names. So for example, incorrect spelling or formatting. So in most languages, loop with a capital L equals one and loop lowercase 
are different. Because that's a lowercase, that's an uppercase. I'm not sure if you can see from my handwriting. But if this is uppercase and this is lowercase, these are two different things. And then, of course, I might elsewhere spell as lop or loop. Again, lots of easy mistakes we can make when we're typing code quickly that will result in syntax errors. One of the ways that we can try to reduce syntax errors in our program is to use a good IDE, an integrated development environment. An IDE is just a software application that provides a comprehensive set of facilities to computer programmers for software development. One of these will be some sort of error diagnostics. So just like Word will try and highlight all your spelling and grammar errors, a good IDE will try and spot those syntax errors and alert you to them before you start trying to run the program. So for example, here's a simple example from, I think, the Eclipse IDE. But I can see I've made an error in my code here. And straight away, it's trying to suggest and highlight to you that you have made this mistake so that you can fix it quickly before you continue with the rest of your program. For more about IDEs and the facilities they offer, I do have a video specifically about them when I look at translators and facilities of languages. Let's take a look at the other type of error now, which is logic errors. So let's just take a look at this very this sentence here. My pencil just rode a bicycle to London. This is syntactically correct, the grammar's fine, but let's face it, it doesn't make any sense. This is an example of a logic error. How can a pencil ride a bicycle to anywhere, never mind London? So although I'm following all the rules of English grammar, there's still something that's gone wrong. So eliminating all the syntax errors in our code will allow the program to run. But this may still lead to unexpected results because of logic errors. So definition of a logic error, when the logical structure of a program produces unexpected results. Essentially, the program works, but it's not doing what the programmer wants it to do. The end result is not what we expect. These errors may be generated by values and variables not being as expected. So, for example, you may have a division by zero error. So let's take a look at some logic errors in Python. So you look here, uh, we've got the classic division by zero here. So we've got our code here where we're doing the division. And what's going to happen at some point, we are going to have a divisor that reaches zero. So I'm going to keep subtracting one from num b, and eventually that's going to be 100 divided by zero. So I need to think about some way to fix that and correct my code so I do not have a division by zero, because that will crash the code. Here's another classic example. We've all done it. We've got the infinite loop. This number series will just keep going basically forever until I switch the computer off or until it runs out of memory. So why is that happening? Well, I've said keep going while num a is less than or equal to 100. But num a is set originally to 1. And then I don't do anything to num a afterwards. I increase num b by 1. But num a never changes. So this will, condition will always be true. So this code block will just keep executing again and again and again and again. So to fix that, well, either I need to change this to num a, or I need to change this to num b. Either way, we'll get something that's maybe closer to what I expect to happen. So when we have logic errors, we can see a lot of problems in our code. Some examples of what we might see that suggest we could have a logic error might be division by zero, programs that do not complete, uh, memory gets filled with data and we get stack overflow errors, the outputs are incorrect, the program crashes, anything like that happens, seems like we have a logic error. So what are the main causes of logic error? Well, we've got conditions that cannot be met in conditional statements. You know, we've got our less than or greater than, less than, equal to, greater than, equal. We get these all mixed up easily. And that can cause infinite loops or conditions not being executed correctly. We might have divisors that can reach zero. We might get stuck in infinite loops. We might just have an incorrect algorithm. Our design for this program isn't correct. 
we could have incorrect expressions. So we might have calculations that are incorrect or we're missing brackets and parentheses here and there. We might do something really simple like forgetting that arrays usually start at element position 0, not 1. And that way maybe we don't access the right element in the array or we go too far and we go out of bounds and the program can crash. So in conclusion, we need to be able to describe syntax errors and logic errors. Syntax errors are when we break the rules of the language. And logic errors are when the syntax is correct, but the logical structure of the program means that it's producing unexpected results. And you also need to be able to spot these errors in pseudocode examples in your exam. But that's usually not too hard as long as you go through it carefully, maybe run a trace table if you have to. All right, thank you for your attention. I will see you in the next video.